What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out how Mick Foley's extreme style changed WWE forever. Now we all know Mick Foley is not the one to shy away from getting extreme, but when WWE did bring him in, he definitely added that element of extreme with just his personas, the different personas like Cactus Jack or Mankind. The, uh, an individual that's willing to go that far to win a match that's willing to put themselves through a uh, literal flaming tables to get someone else over or put themselves through barbed wire and thumbtacks or fall off a sail dislocate their shoulder have a tooth be lodged through their nose during the hell in a sail to make that match to make something special he is willing to destroy his body countless times for the business and to have a lasting impression and that's something that i've always appreciated about me so we're gonna go down memory lane and and just check out the moments i'm sure that he has where it pretty much changed wwe forever and we'll always have these special moments from mick foley so let's get right into this one appreciate all love support let's do the damn thing his chubby physique <laughs> gritty demeanor and out facts i mean if you really think about it mick's whole career was like a big middle finger to conventional wisdom and expectations Jesus. to the wrestling world he was supposed to be just another wrestler but he turned out to be one of the greatest to ever step into the business facts. this is how mick foley changed wrestling forever Foley's wrestling journey started in the early 80s. Even back then, he and his friends were already creating home movies of their own backyard wrestling matches, possibly among the pioneers of the genre. Foley found inspiration in his childhood uh -huh. idol, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, and his admiration reached new heights when, at 18 years old, he hitchhiked to Madison Square Garden in October 1983. Yep. Witnessing Snooka's awe-inspiring superfly splash from a steel cage on the Don Morocco. And who would have thought that would be something that inspires someone for many years later to do something somewhat of the same, but, you know, in a different, different aspect. Him getting thrown off that Hell in a Cell is still one of the most infamous wrestling moments of all time. You can ask a wrestling fan, or you can ask a person that's not a wrestling fan anymore, they will still know about that moment. They still know about Mick Foley damn near dying to have us remember such a legendary Hell in a Cell match between him and The Undertaker. So the fact that it all kind of spurred from this moment right here, it's very, it's just, it's, it's crazy how things happen that way. Ignited Foley's desire to pursue a career in wrestling. <laughs> to turn his dreams into reality, Foley trained under the tutelage of Dominic Danucci, a two-time WWE World Tag Team Champion. Interestingly enough, his training partner happened to be none other than Shane Douglas. With Danucci's guidance and alongside Douglas, Foley made his in-ring debut in June 1986 in Damn. Clarksburg, West Virginia. From there, he gained experience in tag team action and ventured into various promotions including Bill Watts's UWF and a brief stint in Vern Gagne's AWA. However, it was his time in Memphis that provided Foley with his first big push. After spending some time there, Mick finally got noticed by the bigwigs at WCW and mm. got signed to a deal. He burst onto the scene by attacking Sting, sparking a rivalry that ended with a brutal Falls Count Anywhere match. That's crazy. After that, Foley entered into a phenomenal feud with Big Van Vader, which is still talked about to this day, mostly because of the fact that it was during this feud that Foley lost his ear while wrestling. Jesus. Mick wanted to increase. Bro, this is just... Once again, someone that's just willing to put their body through hell to entertain us. That's a different breed. This guy didn't care. It was all about making sure the fans remembered what he did and what happened in that ring. That's different. That's a different level of mentality to have. Recently become more physical, more violent, 
bloodier, more over the top. However, WCW was going in a different direction and didn't want him to do any of that. So he decided to pack up his bags and leave. After leaving WCW under controversial circumstances, Foley made his presence felt in Extreme Championship Wrestling mm -hmm. and Japan. His exceptional work in Philly soon caught wind and the folks over at Titan Towers started taking notice. Vince McMahon and WWE couldn't ignore Foley's incredible journey and what he brought to the table. Mm -hmm. It was the start of a new chapter and one that solidified his place in wrestling history. Following WrestleMania 12 in 1996, Mick Foley made his debut in WWE as the deranged and psychotic character known Man as Mankind. Kind. <laughs> his encounters with Undertaker yep. throughout 96 produced some truly unforgettable matches, including the brutal Boiler Room Brawl at yep. SummerSlam. Although a Buried Alive match at In Your House, Buried Alive, was expected to conclude their feud, they found themselves clashing again the following month at Survivor Series. In a surprising turn, Mankind temporarily diverted his attention from Taker to challenge Shawn Michaels for the WWE Championship at In That's Your House crazy, Mind man. Games in September 96. <laughs> Mankind brought out a more aggressive and intense side of Michaels, proving Foley's ability to hang with the best in-ring performers. And that's good, because he's someone that can just take so much punishment. So from a character standpoint, you have to do a little bit more. You got to get a little bit more sadistic to put Mick Foley, that character, mankind, down. Because he can take so much punishment. And demonstrating that he was more than just a hardcore wrestler. The summer of 1997 marked a significant turning point in McFoley's career. Compelling interviews conducted by Jim Ross allowed fans to delve deeper into mankind's psyche, evoking sympathy and support from the WWE audience. Despite his volatile behavior, such as applying the manual claw to Ross, fans were ready to rally behind Bro, man, Jim Ross always gets the bad end of these damn interviews from people, bro. He's just there asking questions. He ends up getting attacked or cursed at or yelled at or set on fire or the mandible claw applied to him. It's just, it's not fair, man. Find <laughs> mankind. His first major post face turn angle saw him narrowly miss Jeez. out on winning the King of the Ring tournament. Damn, he just hit that production guy. <laughs> damn. Against Hunter Hearst Helmsley. This ignited a red-hot rivalry between the two throughout the summer, which was quite impressive considering the other captivating storylines involving the Hart Foundation, Steve Austin, and The Undertaker at the time. Their match at Canadian Stampede ended in a no contest, leading to a steel cage match at SummerSlam that kicked off the event in thrilling fashion. Foley paid homage to his hero, mm -hmm. Jimmy Snuka, by diving off the cage Jesus. onto Helmsley, oh a jaw-dropping moment that left fans in utter disbelief. That's crazy, bro. Although Foley emerged victorious, the match took an interesting turn as he shed his mankind persona and revealed a tie-dyed Dude Love shirt. Mm -hmm. Dude Love was the second of Foley's three WWE personas, characterized by a light-hearted and carefree nature, a complete departure from the dark mankind. Mm -hmm. In the summer of 97, he teamed up with Steve Austin to capture the tag team titles from Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. Unfortunately, an untimely injury to Austin forced them to relinquish the titles. In September, at the iconic Madison Square Garden, Foley resurrected his old persona, Cactus, Cactus Jack, Jack yep. much to the excitement of the crowd. Yep. He engaged in a brutal Falls Count Anywhere match against Triple H culminating in a pile Jesus. driver through a table in a signature <laughs> WWE victory for Jack. Enter the new age. Bro, that's just, that's still a crazy ass spot, bro. <laughs> Outlaws. Billy Gunn and Road Dog Jesse James proved to be a thorn in Foley's side, repeatedly leaving him battered and defeated. Whether it was Mankind or Dude Love, the brash tag team seemed to have Foley's number. But everything changed when Foley reintroduced Cactus Jack and teamed up with his old friend Terry mm -hmm. Funk, who adopted the persona of Chainsaw Charlie. Hey man, rest in peace Terry Funk, bro. Rest in peace. Another 
OG of the hardcore legends out there, man. These two unpredictable superstars took the fight to the WWE Tag Team Champions and, at WrestleMania 14, appeared to capture the titles in a thrilling dumpster match. <laughs> However, controversy surrounding the dumpster used led to a steel cage rematch, which the Outlaws won the following night on Raw. After enduring a brutal beatdown at the hands of D-Generation X, Foley voiced his frustration over the fans chanting Austin while he and Funk were being mercilessly attacked inside the steel cage. He decided to step away from the sport, only to make a surprising return a few weeks later as Dude Love. Foley's reemergence led to two pay-per-view main events against Stone Cold Steve Austin, mm -hmm. both of which ended in defeat for Foley. In June, Foley reignited his rivalry with The oh Undertaker God, and, bro. back under the Mankind mask, oh. engaged in a brutal Hell in a Cell match. Oh boy. This encounter would go down in history <laughs> yep. as Mankind fearlessly plummeted Jesus from the top of the cell, Christ, crashing dog. through an announce table, yet refused to give up. Despite sustaining injuries, he climbed back up the cell, only to be met with a devastating choke Jesus slam from The Undertaker, Christ. which saw the cell break and legitimately knocking him unconscious and putting his tooth through his lip and lodged in his nose. <laughs> just ridiculous, bro. Just ridiculous, bro. It's just one of the most infamous Hell in a Cell matches of all time. It's crazy. The match continued, showcasing thumbtacks and blood, and although ultimately won by The Undertaker, it became legendary for Foley's incredible dedication to entertaining the audience. Facts. Many regard it as the pinnacle of Foley's illustrious career, and it stands as one of the most iconic bouts of the Attitude Era. In Big the facts. fall of 98, Mankind became a puppet of Vince McMahon's corporation, playing the role of a sympathetic figure. He fought battles on McMahon's behalf, but never received the love and appreciation he sought from his boss, despite even entertaining him with the zany <laughs> antics of Yerpo the that was Clown a funny segment. and the beloved Mr. Sacco. <laughs> Mr. Sacco. <laughs> Foley would play a crucial role in The Rock's rise to success during his initial this WWE Championship too. reign. Mankind had been betrayed by McMahon in favor of the self-proclaimed People's Champion, and he tirelessly sought revenge on his former allies while also pursuing the WWE title that had eluded him. Yep. On the historic January 4th, 1999 episode of Raw, which although pre-taped, drew a massive audience as fans flocked from WCW's yep. live Monday Nitro, Mankind seized his moment. With interference from Steve Austin and a chaotic brawl between DX and the corporation at ringside, Mankind captured the WWE Championship. Classic, classic Monday Night Raw or Raw is War segment of all time. Just, just, crowd was going crazy. <laughs> it was a crowning achievement, the culmination of over a decade of hard work blood, sweat, and yes, even gym socks. However, <laughs> Foley's reign as champion would be short-lived. He engaged in a series of violent gimmick matches Violence. against The Rock, including the unforgettable I Quit match. Yep. Forever etched in the minds of fans thanks to the documentary Beyond the Mat, released in 1999. Mankind and The Rock would forever be intertwined in the year 1999. Despite <laughs> their brutal battles that pushed them to the limits, they surprisingly formed a reluctant partnership, uh -huh. at least on The Rock's part, during the fall season, which was The Rock and Sock Connection. Together, they delivered some of the most hilarious and entertaining moments in WWE's storied history. The Rock and Sock. The This Is Your Life segment, aired on the September 27th episode of Raw, Another legendary remains segment. the highest rated segment in WWE's television program. The Crazy. chemistry between the two former champions was simply outstanding. Mankind desperately tried to win The Rock's friendship, while the self-centered Great One wanted nothing to do with the disheveled, masked oddity. Eventually, The Rock reluctantly accepted Mankind as his partner, and their partnership went on to capture three WWE Tag Team Championships.
As 1999 drew to a close, it was becoming apparent that Foley's in-ring career might be winding down. Mm. His body had taken a beating, and his wrestling... As it would when you've been putting yourself through the ringer year in and year out. Like, he was the guy that was down for taking the chair shots, down for going through thumbtacks, down for going through multiple tables, whatever the case was. However, to get someone over or to really sell the realism of the match or the brutality of the match, whatever it was, he was the guy that was always down for it. Some could say at the detriment to his health, most likely, for sure, without a doubt. But he still did it because that's how much he loved the business and that's how much he cared about wrestling and entertaining the fans. And that's something, once again, certified GOAT, what are we talking about? Skills weren't as sharp as they used to be but he still managed to entertain fans alongside The Rock and Al Snow. In late 99, Foley got involved in an angle with Triple H mm -hmm. and the McMahon-Helmsley regime yep. that would mark the end of his in-ring career for the next four years. Foley and Triple H kicked off 2000 with two unforgettable matches. Yep. The first was a street fight at the Royal Rumble, which turned out to be a breakout performance for Triple H. Yep. It had a compelling story and all the violence you'd expect from that type of bout. The rematch, held inside Hell in a Cell at No Way Out, played off Foley's history in that match. But it turned out to be a whole different beast from his encounter with The Undertaker and served as a fitting end to Foley's in-ring career. Although it was promoted as a retirement match, yeah. Foley's loss didn't mean he vanished from WWE. He would compete in the main event of WrestleMania 2000 and later return as the new commissioner of WWE. Yep. In 2004, Foley stepped back into the Bro, it's, it's just he steps back in in these crazy matches to help people get over. That's just... You can't ask for a, a more generous guy. Hey, I'm going to get you over. And the best way to get you over, I'm going to have you put me through horrendous amount of pain but it's gonna work in the end to make you that much of a better star to the fans man it's fucking awesome bro the ring for a feud with rising star randy orton which had been brewing since the previous june yep at wrestlemania 20 foley teamed up with the rock to take on orton batista and rick flair in a two-on-three handicap match unfortunately foley fell victim to orton's rko costing his team the win. But that match was just setting the stage for the ultimate blow-off in their rivalry. Yep. Orton and Foley met at Backlash. Woo. Orton <laughs> made his entrance, armed with a stash of weapons, including a menacing barbed wire 2x4. Foley, carrying his infamous barbed wire bat, Barbie, <laughs> received a thunderous reception from the fans. Great, great the match. The chaos ensued so as fun, Foley bro. swung Barbie at the garbage can shielded by Orton setting the stage for a horror movie like showdown yeah orton countered foley's overhead swing with a drop toehold onto the unforgiving steel ring steps the battle for dominance intensified as orton attempted to grind barbie into foley's head but foley fought blood stained orton's face as foley intensified yeah. his assault landing punches on the fresh wound foley reached for a lighter <laughs> and a gasoline can threatening to set barbie ablaze However, the intervention of Eric Bischoff foiled Foley's fiery plans, leaving the fans disappointed yet hungry for more violence. Yeah. Foley compensated by striking Orton's <laughs> head with a baking sheet before revealing... Can we give props to Randy selling like a goddamn... He was just selling fantastically. Granted, you don't have to really sell too, too much with some of these things, these gimmick props and stuff. I mean... You know, some of them, I'm sure, would hurt. <laughs> so you don't have to do too much for it to come off believable. But Randy Orton was selling his ass off in this match. In a barbed wire board. In the end, Orton executed one final RKO on the Barbie. And the referee's hand came down for the count. One, two, three. Orton emerged victorious, managing to retain his title against Foley. This match, however, will be remembered most for how Foley threw Orton onto a bed of thumbtacks and Orton's facial expressions after were legendary. Like I said, 
you don't have to sell for that. That's your body's going to sell for you. Whether you want to sell or not, your body is going to give that real reaction for falling onto real thumbtacks. In the years that followed, Foley would occasionally step back into the ring. He had his WrestleMania moment in 2006 yep, in a star-making match against Edge, where Foley was speared onto a burning table. Jesus Christ, his real-life rivalry with Ric Flair spilled over onto the screen, leading to a bloody, barbaric I Quit match at uh -huh. SummerSlam that same year. Foley's performance was phenomenal, to say the least. In 2008, he joined TNA and became its heavyweight champion by defeating Sting. However, as time went on... I also heard they're bringing back TNA. I've seen uh, a few comments about it on my recent videos that uh, you guys are talking about. Oh, they're bringing back TNA. Uh, I think at the beginning of next year, that's when they're supposed to be doing like the rebrand to bring it to bringing it back. So should be interesting to see what they do there, man. So it became clear that Foley's body couldn't handle the regular wear and tear of in-ring competition and he officially retired in 2012. All in all, there were a lot of superstars who played pivotal roles in the success of the Attitude Era. For sure. But none captured its essence quite like Mick Foley. He was the perfect combination of hard-hitting action, bloody violence, and sophomoric humor that kept fans entertained. Foley was a once-in-a-lifetime performer who gave everything he had for the fans' entertainment. Mm -hmm. He was smart, funny, and a great worker. Above all, he was a genuinely good person, as attested by those who knew him. Yeah. It's highly unlikely that we'll ever see another wrestler who embodies so much in one lovable package like Foley did. He may not be a deity, despite those Foley as God signs, but he was <laughs> damn good. Yeah. And the wrestling business was fortunate to have him as part of it. Oh, man, definitely. But I may want to check this next video out. Why it's time to move on from CM Punk. Hmm, that could be an interesting one. Y'all let me know down below if that's a video you guys would want me to check out for sure. That definitely sounds uh, quite interesting. But yeah, man, uh, Mick Foley, like I've always said in just previous videos of people talking about him and what he's done for other wrestlers he's 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 a goat bro he is part of the attitude era when you think of some of the goats of wrestling you got to put Mick Foley there you have to he is he deserves to be there the stuff he's done in the ring the stuff he's done for people to get them over the amount of pain and destruction he's put his body through to entertain us he deserves to be in that place in that category in that conversation of some of the, the best wrestlers to ever wrestle so comment down below let me know what is your favorite mick foley match what is your favorite match you can think of off top of your head you can go back and watch this match no matter how old it is you can go always go back and watch it and have a great time let me know your favorite mick foley match of all time it doesn't even have to be in wwe either but i appreciate all your love and support road to 150k and i'm still in speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace